everyone, welcome in today's video. In today's video I'm going to draw, paint the uh, picture for the second giveaway winner. Uh, Smiling Snorler, I believe it was. And we're going to paint a doggy with watercolors. These are the materials I've used for this video. Um, first of all, a white gel pen, uh, a brush marker from Sakura and the Tombow dual brush blender pen and I used some of the the hydrous watercolor uh, paints from Dr. PH Martin the red oxide and new raw umber but I wasn't too impressed with these colors because they were not well flowing and blooming as much as uh, some of the other colors did uh, especially this one, the raw sienna was really strange in texture as well like uh, really lumpy and once you put it down on paper it looks kind of grainy it's kind of weird like you might be able to see on the pipette here there are lots of pigment lumps in there that don't want to dissolve in in the mixture uh, like all the others are quite smooth and slick this one is a bit thick and has lumps in it so I'm not sure if it is supposed to be this way for the color or if I got a dud but yeah it's it's just not very impressive and on paper neither I can show a little swatch I made with these paints I overall I really really love them they're great but it's just that color that is really strange and awkward but I'll zoom out a bit here like you can see the most of the colors are really vibrant and they flow really well but it is the raw sienna that is really strange try to zoom in here Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's really grainy. It's a lot thicker than the others and it just seems like it doesn't want to dissolve right into water or whatever. It's it's kind of, it's grainy. It's, it's not really okay. And I'm not sure I want to use that color a lot because it just doesn't work right and because of that I decided to throw in some of the Liquitex professional ink which is supposed to be some kind of acrylic acrylic ink I used transparent burnt umber and transparent burnt sienna and these did the job for the look that I wanted to achieve and then of course again with watercolor I used my Ziggy's because I just totally love these markers, they're just awesome. I did read, I didn't know before when I made the uh, review on these, uh, how late fast they, they were. They're never, um, Kuretake has never officially given any light fast test results, but I've read from other users that, users that did their own light fast tests that they do fade. So, if you get these and you make things with or projects with these markers it's best to keep these uh, drawings in a map or whatever or just print your your picture out and hang that onto the wall instead of the original artwork um, and then I used some of the uh, L'Aquarelle Sennelier paints and that's it let's move on to the tutorial As you can see, I have my sketch on the paper already. I tra traced it from the winner's reference photo and transferred it onto the watercolor paper with graphite transfer paper. I chose not to do this one freehand because I wanted to do a realistic pet portrait. So I had to have the sketch as accurate as possible. Had I chose to make it more cartoony, I would have done it freehand. 
I wasn't too sure if I would do this one lineless or not, but I decided in the end to ink the lines anyway. But keep it rather simple so that the line art won't overscreen the watercolors later. I'm using the Sakura brush pen with a dark sepia color. I really like to use sepia over black ink pens because it can be dark but it is not as dark and black as black ink would be. But I like to use sanguine better for inking out white animals or light subject like light skinned people as it is much lighter than sepia and black ink. So now that the dog is inked, I'm going to start with the background. I'm using some of my earth tones from the Dr. PH Martin Hydra set, but I found that the red oxide and the raw sienna did not flow as much as I wanted. And I like and like I showed before the tutorial, the raw sienna is kind of awkward and doesn't look nor behave like the others I got from that line. But I needed for the background to be much darker and vivid. So I decided to wet the layer again and drop in some of the transparent burnt umber acrylic ink by Liquitex. And that did the job brilliantly. It spread wonderfully and added a rich and deep color. Do note that these inks are permanent and can't be lifted like some watercolors after they are dry. Then I added some violet Saint-Lier watercolor to add some contrast amongst all the brown tones. After I got the entire background in and let it dry, I got some of the gold Liquitex ink and flicked it onto the picture with a toothbrush to get a fun splatter effect. I covered the dog with some transparent tracing paper to make sure the splatters won't hit the dog. But for this you can also use cheap printing paper to cut your mask out of. Now that I feel the background is done, it's time to block in the dog. Judging from the reference the dog's darkest colors seem to be close to burnt umber or even black. So I lay down the first layer with burnt umber hydras watercolor. While the ear is still wet, I drop in some transparent burnt sienna and transparent burnt umber Liquitex ink. This way I get a nice smooth gradation and rich underpainting for when I'm ready for the next step. The next ear shows a bit more ochre, so I took some of my Saint-Lier yellow ochre and laid it down on the second ear. Of course, you can use any watercolor paint you have at your disposal. They don't have to be from the same brands I use, so use whatever you have. I also add some yellow ochre on the eyebrows and the other lighter places on the dog's face. Then I use the transparent burnt umber and sienna inks again to deepen the color on the dog's ear. Then a bit of violet to throw in some contrast. Moving on to the face, I lay down a light layer of dark brown watercolor and darker the corners of the face where the light doesn't hit by adding some purple and a lesser diluted wash of the dark brown. The drier your brush, the more pigment it will have hold and the darker your watercolors apply to the paper. The rest of the face I want to keep lighter because that's where the light hits. I gave the nose a purple violet wash to keep the overall contrast. By doing this you make sure you keep your colors interesting and fresh. Now I am going back in with a very dark brown zig clean color marker and add some shadows on the nose. Then I softly blend them out with a Tombow dual brush blender pen. These pens are made to use with watercolor mediums and work really well with water soluble markers and pencils. You can use alcohol blending markers, but the effect will be a lot different. I continue to use the dark brown zig marker to draw out some details on the dog's face and softly blend them out with the Tombow blender pen. Of course you can use a fine brush and water, 
but with this blender pan you have a bit more control and it never gets too juicy. So there's never a chance of ending up with a big wet blob. <laughs> Still adding more details to the face by drawing hints of shadows and at the same time creating a slight fur texture. Then again blending each stroke out to soften things up. I keep repeating this step until I think it looks dark enough for the final step. I do the same thing on the ears, but not nearly as much. Just on the darkest areas and to draw some hairs on the top at the root of the ears. To make them appear a bit fluffy and less flat. Then I decided the face needed a bit more yellow ochre, so I went back in with a zip marker to add a bit of that color. Then I took a white gel pen, I'm using the Jelly Roll by Sakura here and added some highlights on the nose to make it look a bit more moist. Also I'm doing the same around the eyelids. Now I am moving on to its lower body. This part is mainly white, so I'm not going to work it as much as I did with the face. First I wet the area and lay down a light violet wash. Because I wet the surface, the paint will bloom and will leave a soft transition to the white of the paper. Again, the more water you use, the lighter your application will look once dry. To get a bit more highlight in the face, I took a white polychromos pencil and drawn short strokes that goes in a fur grow direction. Colored pencil goes really well on top of watercolor. As you can see, the white shows up really well, even though the white of the polychromos line is not the most opaque white pencil out there. I did not choose to do this with a white gel pen or ink because that would have been too opaque and it would not look as realistic nor appealing to the eye. It would also distract too much from the rest of the painting. Again, I did not add as much highlighted details on the ears. This way, they will not take away from the focal point, the dog's face. And yet, it is enough to make them look realistic and interesting. Also, I really liked how the underpainting looks on the ears. So at the same time, I wanted to preserve that while it would go lost if I'd add too much detail. Even though this is an attempt at realistic portrait, it's also okay to keep the experimental watercolor bit shine through at the same time. Going back to the lower body, I add a light wash of burnt sienna to lay down the small dots the dog has on its chest. Then I take some burnt umber to darken them up a bit. Well, I let those dry and add more shadow and definition on the neck of the dog with the zip markers. Now the lower body is dry, I go back in with a very dark brown, almost black zip marker and add more detail into each of these spots, starting with the big one on the shoulder. Also, I'm sorry for the ginger that popped up. <laughs> he had a cold butt. Again, I'm also softly blending these out with the blender pen. For his or her color, I'm not sure which one of the two it is, I take out a bright red sick marker. This will stand out nicely against all the earth tones and will go in unison with his or hers colorful bow. Before I move on to the bow, I add some final details in the fur with a white gel pen. 
like whiskers. These details are so easily forgotten. I know I forgot them plenty of times in previous works. <laughs> now for the bow. It has quite a complicated pattern which could make you wonder how to tackle it. I, What I did was to divide the pattern in shapes and sketch them on with a red polychromo. Polychromos are very easy to erase. I made zigzagging lines that go slightly upwards, then divided them into triangles. Then I first blocked in all the red triangles and then all the blue, and so on. So we are nearing the end of the video. I hope it was helpful and enjoyable to watch. If you did, then please leave me a like and if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos, then hit the subscribe button over at my channel. If you have any suggestions or wishes for the future videos, then let me know in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice one!